Ever since the removal of the 3.5mm headphone jack on smartphones, the USB-C headphone adapters are on the rise. I lately bought one and if you know me, the first question I had is, how good is the audio quality? Then I got curious how different adapters compare, so about a few more. Hey, Julian Kraus here, and here I got a lightning dongle from Apple, a USB-C adapter from Apple, a USB-C adapter from Google, and a USB-C adapter from Samsung. I also got two more, one from HTC and one from Huawei, but sadly both refused to work on my Samsung S20, and to be honest I'm a bit reluctant to buy an HTC and Huawei phone just to test these adapters, so I had to exclude them from the test for now. I was actually going to start talking about the hardware a bit, but there's really not much to see here. All adapters have a USB-C plug on one end and a 3.5mm jack on the other. Well, except for the lightning adapter, which obviously has a lightning connect on one end. I guess the only bigger difference is that the Apple adapters have a slightly slimmer cable, but I'm not sure if that has a noticeable impact on durability. I want to mention that all these adapters accept TRS as well as TRRS plugs, so you can use headphones and headsets. Okay, it's time to dive into the audio performance. Recurring viewers might recognize this table format. By the way, consider subscribing, this really helps out the channel. Here I've listed the most important specs, so you can compare them directly. The colors give you a rough indication how well an adapter performs in a particular measurement. If you have no idea what these numbers mean, don't worry about it, I will tell you what that means in practice. Let's start out with the frequency response, and as you can see, all the tested adapters perform great in this aspect. You can see this even better in the frequency response graph. This is the Apple USB-C adapter, which actually has a very similar response to the lightning adapter. You can see that the response is virtually a flat line across the chart all the way from 10 Hz, which is below the human hearing range, up to 20 kHz, which is the upper limit of human hearing. The response is nearly perfect. This means that all audible frequencies are reproduced with an equal amplitude. Above the human hearing range, the response falls off steeply, that's on purpose and due to the reproduction filter. This is the Google adapter, and again you can see an excellent response, which is extremely flat in the hearing range. Not much to say here, that's how it should be. And lastly, the Samsung dongle delivers a very similar performance to the Apple dongle, that's once again an excellent response. So in terms of frequency response, the adapters are pretty much the same and they are all pretty much perfect. Output impedance is one of those things that is rarely mentioned by a manufacturer, but if it is too high, this can change the sound of your headphones. Generally speaking, lower is better, and if you want to know more about why that is, I've made a whole video on that topic, which should pop up on screen right now. In my test results, you can see that the Apple and Samsung dongles have an excellent impedance of below 1 ohm, which is perfect for accurate audio reproduction. The adapter thingy from Google has an output impedance of around 7 ohms. That's a tad higher than what I would like to see, but let's keep the church in the village, as the Germans would say, because this is still low enough to make hardly any, if any, audible difference. So output impedance looks pretty good on all adapters, which I actually did not expect. But it's great to see because most consumer headphones and earbuds have low impedances and with these the adapters will still keep an accurate frequency response. Ok, let's have a look at power. This is important because if the adapter does not deliver enough power, your music is simply not getting loud enough. And who wants to jam to quiet music? So power is important. But it would be way too easy if we could just state power with a single number. The thing is that headphones have an impedance and depending on this impedance, the headphone adapter can output different amounts of power. As you can see, the adapters don't have too much problem driving low impedance headphones up to 32 ohms. But if you use higher impedance headphones, the dongle will quickly run out of steam, especially the Apple dongles, which don't even deliver 1 milliwatt into high impedance headphones. As far as I'm aware, there are different versions of the Apple adapter available, and I have the EU version. The US version allegedly delivers more power, and depending on the load, the output voltage can go up to 1 volt. Again, with earbuds and IEMs, this isn't an issue and they will get decently loud, even with the EU version. Although, depending on the headphones, they might not reach deafening levels, but I think that's okay for these adapters. That said, with the Google and Samsung adapters, I could still comfortably listen to my 150 ohm Sennheiser HD5 8X. When I maxed out the volume, they became decently loud, and it was more than enough for casual listening. I also expect something like the Biodynamic DT770 Pro with 80 ohms to work decently well with these adapters. 
With the EU Apple adapters I would mostly stick to earbuds, IEMs and headphones around or below 32 ohms for a loud listening experience. One thing I stumbled across while testing is that the Apple USB-C adapter did not reach a tenth of the power that you could see in my measurements when connected to a Samsung S20. I'm not sure why exactly this is the case, but in this configuration the sound was very quiet and even with sensitive IEMs I hardly got up to a casual listening level. Maybe that's a compatibility issue, but the Apple dongle simply wasn't usable with the Samsung smartphone because of its low volume output. And generally I found the output power to fluctuate quite a bit depending on which device the adapter was connected to. The native configuration, meaning an Apple dongle on an Apple smartphone or a Samsung adapter on a Samsung smartphone, tended to always give the best result. By now you should know that I really like measurements and the resulting squiggly lines. Of course I did a ton of measurements, so you can rest assured that I will cram them all into this video, even though I'm not going deeper into them. Okay, honestly there's not too much going on here. At the maximum output the Google dongle shows a bit of a rise in distortion, but that's still in the realm where I would consider it inaudible. Yep, that's another graph. This one's also great. Would you look at this one? Great stuff. Okay, jokes aside, the distortion on all dongles is really low. Don't worry about it. The noise of the headphone output is another important aspect of the audio quality, because if it is too high you will hear a constant hiss and that's never a good thing. I'm happy to report that all the tested adapters have a very low noise floor, regardless where you set the volume slider at. Here the Google adapter is a tiny bit worse compared to the other ones, but this is still low enough that under normal circumstances I couldn't hear any noise from the output even with IEMs which are generally more sensitive to noise. Channel balance is the audio level difference between left and right. Devices with an analog volume control can show big variances here, especially at low volume settings. But of course the volume on the adapters is digitally controlled and so the left and right channel are always equally loud, just like it should be. The last point on the list is crosstalk and this is the amount of audio that leaks from one channel into the other. And this should be as low as possible to get a good stereo separation. As you can see the Apple dongles fare the best in this regard. The Samsung and Google adapters are a bit worse, but this is still on a level where the crosstalk is inaudible. And to be honest they are less than one decibel away from a green rating, so don't worry about it. To not go completely overboard I didn't measure the quality of the microphone input. I don't think that you're going to use this adapter to record your next album with, but please correct me in the comments if that's the case, I'll definitely want to hear that. So this was just a small audio sample from the Apple dongle. Now I switch to the Google dongle and this is what the audio sounds like. By the way, as a headset I'm using the Beats Earbeats 3. The Google adapter seems to have the most noise in this test, but again I don't expect high fidelity audio from the setup and it does what it is supposed to do and that's to record my voice. And lastly, now you're listening to the Samsung adapter, and as expected it works fine as well. The only thing that I notice is that the recorded audio of the Samsung adapter is a bit more quiet and I had to amplify it a bit in post to make it a fair comparison. No other complaints, the mic input on the adapters is mainly for communication purposes, and for that the quality on all adapters is more than adequate. You can see that the mic on the USB-C adapter works just fine with the Samsung S20, which I think is great to see. Uh, here. One more thing I want to mention is that all three USB-C adapters can also be used on a PC. So simply plug them into a USB-C port and off you go. I found this quite handy and in many cases this can already be a step up from the built-in audio quality on your PC. By the way I made a whole video about built-in audio quality if you want to check that out and see how the adapters compare. So where do all the numbers and squiggly lines leave us? In my opinion it's absolutely crazy how good the audio quality of these tiny adapters is. At their price point they really have no right to be this good. It really is a miracle how far we have come in audio technology that something this small and cheap is on the verge of delivering a transparent audio performance. And in my experience there is already no discernible difference in audio quality between these adapters anymore. Distortion and noise are just at or below the threshold of audibility, so again, don't worry about it. Even the output impedance, which I often find to be quite high on cheaper gear, is nicely low on these adapters, which is critical for frequency response accuracy. The biggest difference to more expensive gear is mainly power. These adapters can deliver a pretty good volume with in-ear monitors, earbuds and low impedance headphones, but they aren't suited for higher impedance over-ear studio type headphones. 
with those the dongle simply do not have enough power to deliver a loud listening level and there's a very high chance you will be left disappointed. Then again, that's not what their main use case is anyways, so I really don't have a problem with that. Again, with the majority of IEMs, earbuds and lower impedance headphones, these adapters work very well and believe it or not, but their quality is already rivaling much more expensive audio setups. Now, which adapter is the winner of the shootout? The Samsung adapter did work best with the S20 that I used to do the tests, but I noticed that the specs can change considerably, especially output power, depending on the smartphone that the adapter is connected to. Because of that and the reason that all adapters in this test performed very well, I would actually recommend to buy the adapter from your smartphone's manufacturer. This way you get the highest compatibility and most likely the best performance. If you're already using an adapter and it works fine or you're having problems, let me know in the comments so other people will know what will work and where potential compatibility issues can arise. All in all, I'm still baffled by how much audio performance you can get for this little money. I hope you could also see that the audio quality of these adapters is much better than many people give them credit for and in fact is oftentimes already much more than you need. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more audio stuff. See you in the next one.